Holy Hindi Pascha. Now I have to hit this button. That's it. We're about, we're live. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so I was going to put it on, but it's going to be weird for us <laughs> watching ourselves. <laughs> I, I, I have to have it for the comments, but I got to turn off the sound. Otherwise, it's going to be so bad. Oh. There we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So it's 701 we did it with just one minute okay. oh, good. Works. i think that's pretty great for the first time being on youtube um but i would like to welcome everybody here so thank you all for joining i can see comments so if there's any comments feel free to type them in as we're going tonight um and this will be uploaded later for those who can't join to view so um let me just pull up my notes. Um, first, I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, I would also, and you know, welcoming back MSA online discussions. We've been kind of MIA for a little bit, um, but we're here tonight. So with our master's award recipient, uh, Jennifer Torres and her selected partner in art conversation tonight, um, and Nicole uh, Scannell. So. Thank you for being here this evening. And then um, for those who don't know, um, Jennifer Torres is this year's master, master's award recipient. Um, the master's award is bestowed upon an established sculptor who exhibits a significant influence and stature within the arts community. Um, this award is not annual, instead is only bestowed by MSA to recognize the distingu distinguished career of an artist and merit of their work. Um, it is you know, and the importance as a mentor in a given region. So MSA is delighted to have Jen Torres as the recipient of the MSA Master's Award this year, um, underscoring her accomplishments and dedication to the field of sculpture and a role as a mentor. So congratulations on that. Um, so I'm going to give brief inter well, introductions to both of you all, and then we'll get going. But um, so... Welcome again. Uh, Jennifer Torres was born in NYC, studied at the Art Student League, and earned her BFA from Cooper Union, also in New York City. Um, her focus is on steel fabrication, metal casting, woodworking, photography. After graduating from Cooper, she trained as a fine cabinet maker in New England, and then later earned her MFA in sculpture at the University of Georgia in Athens. Uh, Torres has lived in Mississippi for 23 years. Um, if that's correct, hope that's correct. <laughs> that's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, where she has her studio and teaches sculpture as a tenured professor at the University of Southern Mississippi. She has had many um, exhibits of her sculpture and installation around the country and won a number of awards and commissions. Torres received a highly competitive 2020 Mississippi Visual Art Fellowship and was given or was chosen as Creative Researcher of the Year for USM's College of Art and Letters. Um, recently, she finished a large commission of her garden boats um, located in Ostrich Park in Bentonville, um, Arkansas, which I think is halfway between us, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, will be there next time. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to stop on my way to <laughs> Um but Jen is a passionate sculptor. Her studio is full of years of explorations and carving, um, this is quoted from Kristen, weirdo children um, out, of, out of wood and cast metals. And Jen's pieces often have a quirky, lively attitude that welcome the viewer uh, much as she does. So um, <laughs> Jen's work at USM is to encourage, encourage her students to experiment with materials and process. Torres has grown the program with consistent improvements to the 3D studios throughout grant writing, individual mentoring of students and professionals, and welcoming visiting artists to the program. Torres's impact on the Mid-South region is undeniable, and we are thrilled to recognize her this year at CONFAB for that with the Master's Award. So, um, so I would also like to thank you, Nicole, for being here. Um, Nicole Stanell, um, for joining us tonight in the discussion with Jen. Um, Nicole works directly with Jen at USM um, as the studio technician. 
a position that we all appreciate more than anything <laughs> in the world. Um, <laughs> but Nicole was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, and she received her BFA in printmaking from Northern Illinois University in DeKalb. Um, Nicole received her MFA from uh, in sculpture at Texas AM. Uh, university located in Corpus Christi and currently works with Jen directly, as I said. Um, and so I would like to welcome you both again and open up the floor to you to allow you to briefly share a bit about your work, um, not out of my mouth anymore, out of yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I guess you have me first, right? Is that? Yeah, let me get the screen sharing going. And... Uh, I'll just start blabbing while you're doing that. And, Please do. Uh, <laughs> so, um, like she said, I uh, I did my first work at the Our Students League in New York City when I was a kid. And I think it was really because my parents just needed to find a way to get me out of the house. <laughs> so, uh, my father worked close. He looked, worked very close to Our Students League. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, anyway, I've been in a studio atmosphere for a long time and ended up at Cooper Union. I started out in drawing um, and painting, was absolutely sure that I was going to be a graphic <laughs> designer, right? Um, and uh, um, and then I uh, walked into the wood shop at Cooper Union, and that was it. I never went back again, never mind the fact that my dad had a shop in our basement for as long as I could remember. So the smell of, of wood and stuff going on. It was always sort of in my blood. Um, and then, of course, I learned a lot of metalwork at Cooper Union casting as well. But these pieces are really, really new. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, you know, anyway, um, it, sculpture can be one of those kinds of things, you know, where you it's so complicated. There can be so many techniques and there can be so many things you have to do. There's so much process. And one of the things I used to love to do at the Art Students League as a kid was gesture drawing with the nude models. And uh, to keep myself from, you know, imploding, right? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to find a way that I could make work out of wood or other materials, wood especially, I think for me, that would feel really quick and, and fresh. And so I would have these big tubs of blocks of wood and I would go in there and I would just pull out stuff and glue it on really crazy all like a mad woman. You mean like student at the yeah. right before critique, yeah. like yeah. student right before critique, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, and I was just really doing it for me until I started to realize that they actually were meaning something much much more than that, and they're part of what I call my daily composition series, which was ingrained like every student, you know, draw in your book every day, do something every day, and so although I was making the initial ones, these the purple and now the red one in a day. I, of course, to make them so that I could show them, I would have to take them apart <laughs> and pin, you can see the wood pins in um, in some of those and pin everything back together again so they'd be really solid sculptures. Um, and so um, there's also a, a great love of architecture in my work. And you can see it a little bit in these in places as well as color. Uh, so, um, I'm working on pieces now that are also very architectural because Cooper Union also has a very big architecture uh, program and we would go and take the same drawing classes together. Uh, so I got to know a lot of architect friends. You can see there's a window in this piece here and windows. Yeah, they show up a lot in, in my work. And, uh, and so um, I think the next pieces are some of the steel pieces that um, I'm still figuring out. Uh, I painted them, then I took the paint off, and then anyway, um, you know, things take a long time to grow <laughs> sometimes. Uh, but in these pieces here, there's a lot of references to architecture. The shapes are the same shapes that I'm using in my wood pieces, just enlarged, you know, and they're hollow. Um, I didn't learn how to TIG weld until I was 50 years old, um, a number of years ago. We won't talk about that. But um, and once I learned how to TIG weld well enough that um, I could just start popping things out and doing hollow, um, you know, hollow fabrication. Um, and um, 
I, you know, it's like I always try to remind people, right? You can never, you can never, I mean, you can learn something new at any time, have it be a major part of your, um, you know, your, your language as an artist. So it really freed me up to, to figure out what I was doing. And, and these are, you know, pretty large, but I'm not fit. I don't know what, where they're going to go. You know, <laughs> like I, like I said, I painted them, I painted some, and then I took the paint off and now they're rusting. So they're just, they're in my garden right now, deciding, you know, you know, where they want to be works. and, you know, yeah. and, and how, but what my, my fantasy is to actually have some of these actually be large enough that you could, um, you could climb into them. Mm -hmm. So anybody out there with a big budget? <laughs> and uh, so I'm working in mild steel and stainless steel. Um, and those are my two favorite metals as well as bronze and iron casting. Well, you know, whatever material we can get our hands on and is uh, easy to access and not right now. Right now, things are so expensive. Oh my God. Oh, um, lots of scrap wood projects. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so I work, I try and do something every day, um, you know, outside of teaching, faculty meetings, NASAD reaccreditation, <laughs> everything else. <laughs> everything else. <laughs> yes. oh. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of me. I, I'm a bit, I'm into big into the idea of stages and sets. Um, and so you'll notice that some have that feeling a little bit like, um, you know, um, being a, a set that you would stand on. And I like to imagine myself crawling in and around everything. So it's where I go and I'm not happy with the world is inside of my sculpture, which is the same as being inside of my head. So, yeah. all right. So enough. <laughs> so. Nicole, you want to tell us a little bit about your work? Sure. Um, when I came here to lovely Mississippi about two years, uh, almost two years ago, I just, <laughs> lovely Mississippi, summers are horrible. Don't come down here. <laughs> um, I had lived in New York for this COVID for about two years in New York, and I didn't need a lot of work. So I was actually very sure crazy when I came down here to Mississippi. And I was like, let's go back to the basics of all the things. So I went back to paper. Woo. I know, right? Um, and I kind of went back to my printmaking days of like, all right, find me paper. Let's, let's play with paper. And I started um, this body of work that I just, I dipped paper in wax, trying to cast it, and it failed miserably. Um, absolutely miserably. Jen told me it would fail, but I tried it anyway. Just like my first sculpture class. And more just, more, just more wax, more things. Um, just like my first sculpture class where I was told I was horrible. And, you know, I don't like being told that. So I tried it a different way. And um, I started digging it in paper clay and creating these forms of just crumpled up paper. And then I would glaze them and I'd fire them all different ways because I'm a novel at ceramics. I just dabble. A lot. Um, and a I, lot. A lot. You I have, have a lot. lot of these. I have yeah. like over a hundred because I, I do consistent, a lot of repetition in my work. I like to make, and that's a problem because I end up with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. As all sculptors do, we end up with a lot of stuff. So I ended up with a lot of these and I was looking at them. I was like, what was I feeling while making them? And they were like thoughts and feelings and trying to get comfortable in Mississippi and like trying to figure out what it was. So I think of these as all thoughts. And then I was lucky enough to get a laser cutter from my lovely friends in New York City. Um, yes, love, love Parsons, technical in the tech world. Um, but they're all laser cutted on the back with um, like just line. And for each one, I created one with an emotion or feeling because I, I started um, more understanding what I was feeling instead of just like, I don't know. Um, so I created that and I kind of put the two together and they morphed into these little feelings and thoughts and emotions, little pieces. So I didn't know all that. I know. I don't really talk about uh -huh. it because 
I, they don't go, don't go in depth about the paper pieces. I love these pieces. So, but I also love casting. Casting is what I enjoy the most. It's why I went to grad school. It's why I went, I got into sculpture because they allowed me to play with multi metal and fire and all of those things. And I love nature. My father um, has always gotten us into nature, taking us for hikes and walks. So I always like things with textures and things that I could find. <laughs> And I decided to cast them. I love textures in nature, so I kind of morphed it. And I found these in my front yard, um, just a pile of mushrooms. And I was like, hey, Dan, can we cast these? And I love them, and we need to cast them. And she's like, I don't know if it will work. I was like, you know, know. it's cast iron. We'll just try. It came, it came out awesome. They it came, came out, out awesome. Yeah. My favorite part is picking these up. It's like meditating. Yes, that's my work. I make a lot of work. <laughs> and that's about it. So you said these are wood and paper and the paper is dipped in something? Is paper, that what um, It's dipped in paper clay and then it's bisfire. Wow. And then I can high fire it and yeah. create these. Um, I got crisp, small micro crystals. I don't know if that's actually what it's called, but micro crystals on there, but Accident and fluke, and I was like, I'm <laughs> because I grew in my master show, I um, grew crystals on a lot of my sculptures as well. So I was like, wait, this is a connection, this is awesome. I love this, creates another depth to it that I never thought I would actually get. So, yeah, it's really cool. I was, I heard you mention the clay a little bit, but it kind of cut out, so I was like. Oh. Please tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's literally just porcelain and um, toilet paper. And I just dip clay and things. I have some fabric pieces that I crocheted um, in crochet. And then I dipped it in uh, paper clay and they became like wall pieces. They're still hanging on the wall because they're not done yet. And it's like your houses, mm -hmm. they have to sit there for a while to really figure out what, what exactly they want to become. Yeah, a lot of play and exploration. Yes. Oh, Seeing gosh. what the result ends up being in the process. Yeah. Yes. And it's almost more important than the finished piece sometimes, you know, is the, mm -hmm. the end result is the process of getting there, you know, all the places it leaves you. You could then get ideas for the next piece. And then you're like, oh, can I just start that one now? And then I'll, I'll do this one later. I'll finish it. I promise. Yes. No, so hard sometimes. You want to try everything. You do it all the time. Mm. I get that a hundred percent. I think we all do. It's just we want to explore and play with materials and learn new things and just dig in and see where it goes. And then sometimes the other pieces just get kind of pushed to the back burner. <laughs> I mean, you finish it eventually. It, it will be there. Yeah. Oh. For sure. All right. I guess I can exit the slideshow or we can leave it up as we talk. What would you all prefer? We can talk about that. I'd rather see your face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no, I mean, I don't want to see Nicole's work. I want to see your face. <laughs> She's my work on I'm, um, I, I don't have very good vision without my granny glasses. So uh, now I can see you. <laughs> One of the bad things about being a master. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we talked, I heard a failure mentioned a little bit in there mm. or um, like the process of casting and it was failing or painting something and you didn't like it and then stepping back. Um, can we elaborate on how failure affects your work um, either of you or just both of you talking together? I'm sure you all work together in this. <laughs> You see each other. <laughs> so, yeah, so Nicole has been witness to my, it's usually, <laughs> it's usually like some innocent ballpoint pen. <laughs> yeah, I just not stamp on it and like be like, oh my God, and I'll be like, um, what's going on? You all right? You cool? So, yeah, we, we know each other pretty well enough now that she'll just be like, all right, she'll come in, see me having a hissy fit, turn around, <laughs> leave the shop. Yeah. And, um, Although the, sometimes it's important to throw things, I think, you know, just not at anyone. Right. That's a good thing to just throw. It's or, okay. 
turn around and try and sorry everybody i have really bad allergies so i have a cold right now so i'm sucking on a, a lozenge but it's really important to be able to take that frustration and turn it into some work and and uh Sometimes it's the work you're working on. Sometimes it's turning it into something else, another something else, another piece or something. Um, but failure is who I think is just it's probably 50 50 for me with success. And um, what I find really interesting is that when you think something's a failure, then you put it away for a little bit and you come back later and you're like, oh, that really wasn't. Mm-hmm really wasn't as bad as I thought it was, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I think, um, having those failures is what you can't, ha- you can't learn if you don't have a failure. I mean, you have to, you have to be here to get back up again. So there it's, it's super important to be able to embrace that. And the things that it teaches you, you know, the, the failure is where I've learned some of the coolest stuff that I've ever had happen, you know, when something fell over and broke or something, or I had to put it back together or, or <laughs> I had a whole series of work happened from a show I was taking down when I was in graduate school. And it really was just me just wrapping the pieces up and laying them down on the floor. And I turned around, and there was this pile of wrapped pieces. I was like, oh my God. I was like, that's the, that's the thing. That's the thing, you know? And um, I was like, you just made all that sculpture water, wrapping it up and pouring wax on it. And I'm like, cause that's the piece, you know, you just never know where those mm-hmm. things, those things are going to occur. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. I have a, a piece myself that I submitted. It's like when I brought it to the show, it was in its crate. So it's a piece that hang like comes out of the crate, hangs on the wall, like, bronze and dirt and something but they're like we'll only accept it if you leave it in this crate open in the crate I'm like this is the piece now this is the <laughs> right, right. I mean some of the crates that were comes in were masterpieces themselves <laughs> that must be very beautiful I make a good crate but <laughs> so, like, okay. yeah man if your school ever goes under you have a job yeah <laughs> So it's, it's weird how that happens when you're like packing something up and you're like, yeah, yeah or. Yeah. Well, you know, we see failure all the time at the school, you know, through me, usually through the students and trying to encourage them to keep their chins up and keep going um, and embrace that. What, what happens? It's a little hard to tell that to them, you know, um, you know, at nine o'clock the night before a critique you know, breaks the change, you know, they kind of give you the yeah. evil side eye, but I just tell them, go with the mistakes. Mm-hmm. You'll be fine. Get mm-hmm. some sleep. Don't be here all night. <laughs> Don't leave a mess for me to clean up. It's <laughs> easy to find. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, how do you push the students to, to embrace that failure or kind of drive them in that direction mm. right if they only knew how much we are driving them in that direction right mm-hmm. um i mean you have to be a little tricky about it because nobody wants to think that we're trying to cause them trouble you know no, but you don't want you them know, to fail yeah. But- yeah it's like you have to find that happy medium because the reality of it is is that if if i'm not challenging people to um get out of their comfort zone we're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over again. They're going to find that happy space and they're just going to, you know, oh, okay. You know, so for some folks, it's, I like the metal shop. For some folks, it's, I like the wood shop and people kind of end up in one place or another. And I was the same way. I mean, I was, you know, I loved working in metal, 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 metal. And then, you know, I took a class in chair building and I was like, oh, the wood shop, you know, and, but it was my professors, you know, who just encouraged me to try every material that I could try. and. Um, but I think also, um, I, I don't know, maybe in some ways we don't actually have to push them to fail because they, they, that happens on, you know, on a pretty regular basis if they're doing their job of exploring all the elements, they are going to fail. And since we don't couch it as a failure, since we couch it as part of the process, there's no such thing as failure. It's really like, okay, well, that happened. So what does that tell us? You know, so. Now write down some notes so that you can make that happen again on purpose the next time. 
you know, that was a weird texture, right? Maybe you didn't want that texture now, but if you take some notes and maybe practice, you can make that a part of your lexicon, that particular element. So, um, you know, yeah. I mean, you've had plenty of failures with some of your clay pieces, you know? Oh, yeah. They fall apart. I don't know if you miss them that well or take them out too early. Lots of, lots of failures. Lots of failures. I mean, ooh, that what got me the sculpture was a failure. Like being called out on crit when I didn't have my piece and being told we're not talking about it because it ain't done. And it was like, uh, oh, yeah, you're. Oh, mm -hmm. Eric and I know you. He's a grad student, then. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's just like, yeah, we're not talking about it. I was like, what? Nothing? Nothing? I don't like being told no. And most of the time, I challenge that. I and I was on that seat that day. Oh, no, no, no. I wasn't great at taking criticism at all. But then I did a weaving piece, and he was like, from my mother's backyard, she's trying to weave a willow. And I was weaving them all together. And he's like, you're not doing it fun. You're doing this. This is now you are a sculptor. I don't know why you're in <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I I failed a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but you roll with the punches, and you're like, when a student is like, well, how do I do this? And I was like, well, how do you think you can do it? And like getting them through like that, like panic. Oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing, and it's last minute, and it's like, no, you'll be fine breathe and you can figure it all out you're not going to fail this is a learning moment learning yeah always find the learning moments i mentioned to my students every time the semester starts that as long as they're experimenting and trying things those new things will lead to failure but I see that that's happening and that's what's important is the trying new things and pushing themselves to do that. So yeah. I'll learn from it. It's okay. <laughs> Are we supposed to read off that or? I don't know. <laughs> oh, is there? No, we were just, yeah. Can you, you can hear us okay, right? Yeah, definitely. Good. Did you, did you all have a written something? You want to oh no! We're just, okay. <laughs> just, you know, yeah. Sorry, everybody. Hey, Frank. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Frank Stella wants to be part of the party. Frank, go away. <laughs> um. So, in the that failure, do you see that that affects motivation? You all both mentioned that you're making pieces constantly. So, Jen, I know you try to. You said that you try to make something every day. Um, how does that failure affect that motivation or how do you keep that motivation to make that something every day? Oh, uh, oh, well, yeah. Sometimes you just come, I mean, you teach, you teach. I mean, mm -hmm. we're all in academia. I'm sure some of the people listening are, I mean, you're just dead exhausted, you know, standing at your front door with your car clicker, trying <laughs> to open your front door, you know, because you're so tired work. or you're working. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, so I mean, right now my sink has got is piled with dishes because for me, it's come home. Do I really want to clean the house? No. Do I want to go in the studio? Yes. You know, um, so all that stuff kind of gets pushed to the side. Um, but, you know, I, I think sometimes you just have to also just say, I'm not doing it today. I'm not doing anything. I'm going to you know, Sunday's like, I watch my football games on Sunday. That's like my way of sort of toning out everything and just sort of focusing on something. And I'm usually like texting with my brothers, you know, about what's going on in the game, you know, and, um, and it's just my sort of way to go. Okay. That, that time period is not, you know, so it, it, in some ways, but I still will like have my sketchbook. I still can't get away from it because I'll have my sketchbook and I'll be like, you know, I've made a couple sculptures. I, and that I've named via NFL games. So this would be like the, you know, <laughs> the Patriots, you know, Buccaneers game or whatever it might be. And then, you know, um, just because it's just something I'm doing. But I think that if you, for me, it's finding that time to have my downtime um, uh, from thinking about anything. And so that this way then um, uh, I can jump on it, you know, 
And I think sometimes we have to also broaden the concept of what making is. What do we consider to be making? Because I think when I was in school, I was always focused on it had to be this sort of finished piece that had certain attributes to it, would hang on the wall or stand by on its own or whatever. And the idea of making is something that we do every day that doesn't have to be a finished piece. It could be just I'm going to take some cardboard and I'm going to cut it up and I'm going to stick some things together and I'm going to make five of those. I like to do little exercises where I like give myself, I'll say five minutes, that's it. And I'll just do, do, do. And then I'll do, and those end up becoming models for things. Um, But there's something really satisfying about looking at, you know, 15 little maquettes um, when the um, end of the day is there. So I think the idea of what is making, is something that we also have to sort of consider. You know, it doesn't have to be. <coughs> you talk. <laughs> <laughs> Take over. <laughs> so for me, I work my 40 hour job as a technician, fixing these <laughs> classes. And I teach uh, a class, uh, well, just one <laughs> class, a 3D class. And I'm at my building 46 hours every week. And it's like, okay, when do I have my time to work on my stuff? Like, I try and show the students that I'm actually working. I'm not just saying, yes, I need work. But I make work with it. So, like, after my dinner hours on my late days, I try and bring out something that I'm working on, either if it's wax or um, my paper pieces, being like, do these all look okay together? And then I asked the students who take these, and they were like, hey, that's me. I was like, yes. <laughs> I don't have the luxury of having people print my work anymore. Like, I don't get other people's opinions. It's like, you guys are also important to my work creativity and stuff. And they're like, no, that doesn't work. And I was like, why doesn't it work? Let's have a critique. Full on. Lay it on me. Because I'm a very honest person. Can't buy poop. I see it on my face. It's very expensive. Um, which is horrible. Because, yeah. Um, people cry. <laughs> I just am honest and I don't always judge other people's facial expressions when they're like crying. Um, but I, I give them honest answers and I expect honest answers because I I was taught by a lot of people that were very honest, which I appreciate because like, sugarcoating stuff is I can't do it. So I don't really want people to do it for themselves. So, yeah, yeah. My weekends are for my dog quality time. Um, she's delightful. Um, but I actually made a studio at my house, my public house that I read it in the garage, so that I wasn't at the building more than 46 hours a week, unless I wanted to do ceramics. But it gives me that like balance in my life so that I can be like, oh yes, I have, I can be by myself and work how I like to work instead of surrounded by students who are lovely. And great, but I want two murders. <laughs> yeah, and I've been in that position being the tech and working around the students and trying to come in on the weekend to use the studio and they're working on their things. And then it hurts to be like, I, I'm doing my thing right now. Like, yeah, I will answer your question very quickly, very yes. harshly. Yeah. And be like, here's your thing. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> If you're dying, please let me know. Yeah, don't do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's hard to find a work home balance for sure. There there isn't, yeah, it's yeah. Well, it's a career. And you know, and for those of us who are in um like tenure track positions or just as anyway, it doesn't have to be a tenure track position to want to make art. It's it's finding, you know, it's this balance between thing, everything that you do. And I can pretend that my teaching doesn't influence my work, but I know it does. I mean, I know it does because I'll think of something I want to teach them and that I learned how to do that. And suddenly I'm doing that too. And, you know, and so I like them to see, I have a table at the studio as well. Um, I'll do all my woodworks here and I have a laser cutter here and I'll do that plaster and all kinds of stuff here and my fiberglass pieces, but I do all my metal work at USM. And um, I want them to see my, 
lots of stuff on my table, you know, and um, uh, yeah, they're usually pretty respectful, I'd say, you yeah. know, they'll, 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 you know, be like, can you help me, you know, and, and um, so, but you have to mitigate that times for when you can be in your own space as well, because you do, you know, and I don't think it has anything to do with them being students, it's just other people. Yeah. For me, it's just, I just need to not be around other people for, you know, good portions of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that can be, it can be difficult, but, you know, it makes it better when you enjoy being there and the students and making and the people that you surround yourself with. But there are times when it becomes overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> need a moment to yeah. sit yeah, I mean, it's your it's career, it's career in your life, but it, it it's still a job, mm-hmm. and you have to recognize that as a job, so that you can separate yourself from it and get work, get your work done and uh, and be a model for your students to show them the same thing. And so I think they're actually they respect us because they know that we we have that line, you know, and that we're willing to go and 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 we'll help them a hundred percent when we're with them, but that we're going to step away from that. And you know. They like being in the studio without us as well. You know, I mean, they like that time when they're there with their friends and there and there's not some overlooking them. And, you know, so, I mean, they, they like that just as much. So, you know, so it's all equal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, oh, um, yeah. That kind of leads into ideal schedule. Do you, oh. <laughs> what would be your ideal schedule? Well, an ideal if, schedule, even if I was a billionaire and didn't have to work. <laughs> I mean, I'm an early riser, so um, I actually learned that in undergrad because we're at Cooper Union. Um, everybody was late. Well, I mean, I don't know. I shouldn't say at Cooper Union. Every student I know was like a night owl. So I learned in undergrad and grad that if I came in real early. I could have the studios to myself. So somewhere in there, my whole time frame changed. And so I'm up at five I, without a alarm clock. I just get up at five. Um, that's just my natural rhythm. So like generally, you're like, you can't see that I'm like half in my pajamas now because generally at this time of day, <laughs> I'm heading off the bed. But um, I mean, I don't even know. It wouldn't be, it would be like non scheduled and be like, no, like, you know, it'd just be like, here's the whole day and here's this person who's going to cook and clean for you. And you're, yeah, no, <laughs> and you're just going to be yeah. in the studio all the time. And, um, but for me, being in the studio is multiple things. My work changes very frequently. So I do smaller bodies of work. Some things I go back to. So the pieces that are in the MSA um, Square and the Cube show, um, those are part of my, um, weirdo, uh, weirdo children. And that's a series I go back to pretty regularly. And, but I do these other ones, like the wood ones you saw, um, there might only be six or eight. And th- then I, I switch completely. And that's just the, my sort of style of doing things. You don't think it's the same until you put them together and you start to realize the shapes and the forms and the colors are the same. And, you know, um, so, well, for me, an ideal schedule would be, you know, I mean, who would be, you know, like I said, not to, um, but I, I can't really, I can't really ask for a better schedule, you know, where I am. I mean, everybody all schedule. Jennifer Torres is scheduled. <laughs> That's what I put on. You would want my schedule, right? <laughs> I don't think you want mine. No, 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 no. That's what I want. I want yep. two days a week teaching. Yeah, that's totally cool. Yep. And then the rest of the time, oh, I'm ready. Oh, and, and then make my own work. I, wait, wait, really like that. Like, I'm nervous. Yeah, no, I wrote that down because I was uh, <laughs> yeah. nervous. I was like, I'm not first. <laughs> well, there hasn't been all, as much making recently. <laughs> and yeah. that's the other thing that you know we deal with is that um, we. Uh, I used to always say if it wasn't for the administration, school would be great, you know, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, because there's no, but, but we are in, we are an institution and that institution supports us. USM supports us really well. I mean, you know, they, they, they make it so um, I can have a technician and I can have a technician that I can give free access of the shop 
you know, and uh, who's making things all the time and not just, you know, someone who is a glorified grease monkey, you know, but another artist um, in, in with us, you know, because there's three of us all together. There's also um, Alan Chen, who's our ceramic sculptor. And, um, and so we have a team. And uh, so, yeah, like that building open all the time, you know, like with, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so anyway, I guess you revealed that you would want my schedule. I do. You want to write, think- you can write my NASA reports for no, me. Oh, do. see, see uh-huh. Yeah. I need that to the table. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. But I, like, I see people's work ethic and, like, their ideal times, and I was like, I wish I could wake up at 5.30 without an alarm clock starting at 3 a.m. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah. My mother would also say that I'm a horrible morning person and I can never do that. She's a morning person. We actually had this discussion today. She's like, you're better than your sister. Uh, I was like, really? And she's like, yeah, you don't throw stuff at me. And I was like, yeah, exactly. Uh, I just am like, what do you want? Um, but yeah, I mean, my mother has like worked two jobs. Like she's worked for a university, a healthcare um, thing um and then she retired and got another job and then is now working retired again during the summer and i'm um, still working for the community and stuff like that she's never stopped and it's like oh that's a really a strong worth i think oh yeah. Uh, yeah she keeps mm-hmm. going and going and going and going and it's like okay can we take a break can we learn to relax that is one thing i wish my mom like just learn to chill out but no, I can't. We always have to be doing something. Everything must be like moving. What am I doing? Am I cleaning? Am I working? All of those things. And it's like, okay, I'm going to go on vacation now and not do anything. <laughs> and then you do stuff on vacation anyway. And it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, we're... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jen, you mentioned the team that you work with, fellow faculty Nicole as well. Um, Can you talk more about, you know, working together to support each other in the space as well as supporting the students and just how teamwork plays in? Um, Well, I think it's, it's super important because we, it's not just us, it's, I don't know how many hundred something students that are in and out of our building. Oh, you, you I counted because I was like, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, I mean, it, it's, uh, um, we, finding that fit is super important, um, and, uh, and technicians tend to not stay for a very long time, because honestly, we all know the tech jobs, they don't pay really well, mm-hmm. um, and so, you know, sometimes something will happen, or something might, op- something else might open up, but the point is, is that, um, when you find someone who you really can work with and you really enjoy being in their company um and you know you only yell at each other oh. one, once in a while yeah, once in a while when i forget um, something i don't write it down yeah. enough and it's like um, Ooh. It's, uh, yeah so by us having a very uh, and we, i've had lots of awesome technicians over the years you know so it's it's um, not just nicole you know um but it's that the students need to have that kind of uh, support system. They need to see that we're, you know, the last thing you want to do is have a program that's all bitter and, and uh, you know, and sometimes that happens. We're not a very big program. It's a lot of, you see a lot of the same students, as you know, over the years. And so sometimes it can, you know, can be a little bit like, all right, let's, let's talk about art now and, you know, stop with the gossip and, you know, and, um, but that's just, as humans, we, we do that, you know, so I think to some extent, um, being able to get along also means that even though we're friends and we do stuff like this, or we'll even go on a short road trips or whatever, we also have our, our time, you know, like we're not constantly texting each other over the weekend. Going, what are you doing? What, you know, I mean, you know, we like to send funny memes to each other every now and then. And, uh, well, but, crazy things we see on Facebook. Yeah. Like, Really? Good job, and you're like, how did they mess up their hands? Yeah, like that mm-hmm. kind of scary. You know, oh, you know the OSHA. You follow the OSHA on, um, on yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think there has to be a balance there, so that when we are together, um, this is like you know, she's like my work wife. We we have to have that balance where when we're together. 
we're on it together and we're we're on the same page and we you know um and the same thing with our other colleague um so that the students but i think also beyond that it's supporting each other in work mm -hmm. so encouraging each other to work so when someone's feeling down hey you know just get in there and get it done you know yeah. and or do you need a hand or you know can i help you unload something and, and that kind of stuff or even you know sort of like that like sort of not critique not critique you know or somebody walks over and they go what's that you know <laughs> and yeah. you're like oh no <laughs> you know and uh and we're the longer we know each other the more we are able to talk about the deeper parts of our of our work you know so mm -hmm. and um and uh but I, I think it's real important i think like i said before i don't want to have a technician that's just you know change the wire out in welders or mix clay i want someone who's going to be in there and getting dirty not afraid to get dirty yeah. um and be a part of um you know of the conversation you know the conversation that is all about art and what we do and stuff and uh yeah but uh nicole how has working with jen influenced your work um, she's made me get to work. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I see her working and I'm like, am I not making work? <laughs> or, excuse me, um, I see some of my old professors um, and I'm like, why do I not have that work ethic? Why can I not make, keep house every day, Jack Ron? Every day, Jack, yeah. something, something new every day. And I'm it's like, like though. It's it's terrible, but it doesn't matter. I'm like, why am I not making that with work? I know. It's like, why like and i see her and i'm like oh you have all these shows nope i gotta get my ass moving i gotta it's make work we're getting a lot of good I stuff know, done I know. though yeah it's 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 slow coming in a bunch of shows she's been here you know well you know yes yes um, um yeah. we have sloss coming up more opportunities yes. for stuff i'm so excited can't yeah. wait for sloss i'm so excited yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's an exciting thing i love sloss <laughs> Um, how long have you been there, Nicole? I'm just curious. Um, I started. I started in December, so it's almost two years. In okay. December, it'll be two years. So, yeah. COVID was the reason yeah. I got her. Yeah, I I got furloughed from Parsons, the new school, which I was a technician in their wood shop and their metal shop, but primarily in the metal shop. And then they let me use their laser cutter room. It was like twelve laser cutters you don't work. Wow. um and then um i was like i got furloughed i don't like new york let's move home <laughs> and then i was like oh i need to find a job and then i found usm and mm -hmm. the way jen called me was i actually saw jennifer and i was like oh my older sister's <laughs> and i was like hey and she's like hi this is Jennifer Torres from usm and i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it was like oh, mississippi okay and then i called my sisters and i was like i have a twin sister and an older sister they're way good at organizing and like making moves mm -hmm. um they're really good at it i'm not i'm not my sister is a unicorn finder of houses she found my house here and our house in red hook it was beautiful excellent and i was just like hey i might be moving to mississippi hattiesburg how do i do it go <laughs> And yeah, yeah. Well, Jack, Jack was one of her professors, and so I'm good friends with Jack. So it's that same thing again. It goes back to that thing we were talking about, like you know, like I'm like you, y'all, you need to come to to Confab, you know, like telling yeah. the students because you go to Confab, you're going to see a whole handful of people, and you're probably going to see them again when you go to Sloss or some of them, and then you start mm -hmm. moving around those circles, and next thing you know, when you go to apply for graduate school somebody who met you at sloss is the professor who's reviewing like yeah exactly right eric eric yeah. um was just like you need to get taught by jack ron and i was like okay cool i applied and he calls eric he's like hey how should you how is she and i was like it's like she'll work and she'll yeah, work yeah, <laughs> yeah i think it was a little more my work but i was like um yeah they all know each other yeah <laughs> So we have 10 minutes left. So on that note, anybody who has questions, feel free to put them in the comments or in the chat. 
We would appreciate it. But also let's talk about Confab. Confab's in 15 days in Jacksonville. Jackson, just Jackson. Jackson. Sorry, not Jacksonville. We're not going to Florida. Sorry. It's late. It's in Jackson, Mississippi. It's, it's at the end of a long week, right? It's, it's been a long week. So why why should people come to Confab? You can hit on it a little bit. Well, I mean, I think the um Anil, right? Anila, right? And yeah, like yep. first of all, the um the visiting mm -hmm. artist, the um I mean her work is mind blowing yes. and beautiful. Um, so she's gonna be there. Um, and and there's gonna be some panels as well as uh, just I think lots of other artists. You know, yeah. I mean I met a couple when I brought the when I went to do my installation today at Millsaps. I met a couple of the sculpture students from Millsaps, and they were real excited and they're real excited to meet sculpture students from USM and I know that my students are interested in meeting other artists from the state and out further of that and and then I was able to introduce them to MSA and what MSA does and the whole thing about the uh, uh, scholarships and being a member can give you opportunities for shows we're always talking about the lines on the resume you know and yeah. um, so um, <clears throat> so that I mean for me and it and I think for me, the fa my favorite thing about any kind of conference, whether it's a single day or a longer, is the stuff that happens in between all the panels and all of that. The sitting down and hanging out and talking and discovering people who have similar interests and, or, you know, oh, wait, that was, oh, oh what, what kind of resin are you guys using? And, you know, and you just all that sort of information starts to sort of trickle down in a way that you can't even calculate, you know, and it's so invaluable, I think, so. And uh, that's for me, but I just want to meet other artists in Mississippi. I've mm -hmm. never lived in the state or, well, I lived in Corpus Christi, Texas, um, but that's, just, that's Texas. Texas is its own thing. But Mississippi, I want to actually meet some new artists to hang out, just socialize really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a great opportunity. I've been involved with MSA since 2015 as a student and on so it's a great opportunity to you know for students to meet faculty and in other institutions as well if they're looking to go to yeah you know grad school or so on um it's you know the scholarship that we offer is phenomenal and we have our students giving scholarship talks at the confab i know i'm looking forward to that yeah i want my students to see that so <laughs> yeah. and they do a phenomenal job and their work is amazing um but you know as a recipient even of the scholarship um it was just a great opportunity to, for, for me to be able to go to the conferences you know give the talk see the work and see the people involved in the sculpture world in the area especially if you're new to a region yeah. so, so i started in grad school as part of msa so yeah. Well, it gives you a lot of confidence when you get up there and talk in front of everyone and show your work. <laughs> so, Showing yeah. your work is a thing. Like having that confidence to actually show your work out there. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. I'm still working on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that the panels learning from each other. I mean, it can just be a conversation that sparks up or you see somebody's work who's, you know, giving a panel or yeah, um, student yeah. Work, and then you can start a conversation how did you do this how did you so it's yeah. a learning opportunity and networking opportunity mm -hmm. um but it's also just fun to be part of this community and actually get to gather with these people yeah not often you just get to spend a day talking to people who enjoy the same things about the things you enjoy so exactly yeah yeah in such a great atmosphere too and i'm telling you the oh the gallery, the hall gallery in Millsaps is just beautiful. So um, it's going to be really nice to see the show. And, uh, I'm just really looking forward to it. So yeah. yeah. You've got to see the sneak peek of Anila's work today. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Yeah. So, and uh, I, I just can't wait to meet her. So and, uh, we're, we're, now we're friends on Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> so, uh, and, and you know, and I get to, I mean, I get to accept this award, which I, I am really, you know, honored to do that, you know, and, um, you know, you can't help but feel a little bit like a, 
you know, like a poser a little bit, you know, you're just like, you're like, eh. but, um, but at the same time though, um, you know, yeah, you work your butt off. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to whatever, do whatever I can do. If it means that, um, you know, my students can have access to seeing some things they don't ever get to see and meeting people, it's all worth it. So, yeah. So I don't see any questions. So if you all have any, please get those in. I see Letitia's confab. Um, Cause confab. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> October 15th, Jackson, mm-hmm. Mississippi. And then on the 14th, the night of Friday night before at seven will be the reception for the Squaring the Cube show. Yes. Where you'll get to see her work. So and there's the dinner that night as well. Ah. Where we get to award you the award and just have dinner <laughs> and hang out. So clean clothes. <laughs> <laughs> everybody in clean clothes without <laughs> also, I don't, even when I even when I have on clean clothes somehow I get dust just all over me so I know I know I know it's kind of like you know like after after an iron port everyone take, gets their leathers <laughs> off and you're like so everyone introduce yourself again because I don't know who any of you are anymore so oh but uh yeah so well this is really fun yeah, yeah. Thank you both so much for joining me tonight in this little discussion, conversation, sharing with us your work, a little bit about how you spend your days um, (laughs) and your love for football on Sundays. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm excited to see you both at Confab. Yes. Yes. It'd be great to meet you you in person. person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and everybody out there come to confab come to confab (laughs) come meet all these people yeah thank (laughs) you thank you for joining all right all right have a good night all right bye everybody (laughs) to remember how to yeah Yeah, i know out there come to (laughs) confab